to mute ourselves now, right? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, HKCBA's webinar. We are just going to take uh, a few seconds uh, just so that everyone can log in uh, properly. I am seeing attendees flow in uh, through our participants. So uh, we'll just wait a few seconds and then we'll start right away. All right, welcome everyone, and thank you for participating at this webinar organized by the Hong Kong Canada Business Association. My name is Cindy Ho, and I, I am the National Vice President and Secretary of HKCBA, and I'm also a partner at DS Lawyers. I hope you're all doing well and that this webinar will be able to provide our members and prospective members of HKCBA uh, some ideas on how they could leverage the HKCBA platform and uh, services to add value to their business and networking. Uh, please note that all attendees and participants can ask questions using the Q&A uh, button at the bottom or top of the screen, depending on how your app is uh, configured. And we will have a uh, question and answer period at the end, and I will be collecting uh, them all. Before we dive uh, into our panel discussion, HKCBA is honored and delighted to have Emily give the latest updates on Hong Kong under the new normal. Ms. Emily Mo is the Director of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office, commonly known as the HKETO in Canada, and HKETO is the official representative office in Canada of the Hong Kong SAR government. Uh, HKETO is a core member of the Hong Kong family in Canada, and Emily is the head of the Hong Kong family here. Emily, welcome. Thank you, Cindy. Um, good afternoon and good morning to friends in different parts of Canada. And, uh, thank you, um, Andrew, for organizing the webinar today for us to discuss um, the advantages of Hong Kong and the um, advantages of the Hong Kong CPA in the new normal. First, let me give a quick update on the COVID situation in Hong Kong. While more and more countries and cities are resorting to extreme social distancing measures, again, Hong Kong has never, been gen um, has never experienced a total lockdown. The epidemic situation in Hong Kong has been quite um, stable in the past few months. The number of daily confirmed cases hover around single digit this state. While COVID in, uh, COVID's impact is still with us, there are positive moves in Hong Kong. Business reopened, members the public um, returned to office. School resumed, local um, group tours of uh, 30 people is now allowed. And Hong Kong and Singapore recently reached an in-principle agreement to establish a bilateral air travel bubble. One more positive note, our most loved Lang Wai Fong was crowded with thousands of zombies and monsters uh, for Halloween celebration last uh, weekend, or wearing face masks in bars adopting new precaution measures. So 2020 is definitely a very special year for all of us, and it is also very special for the global economic development. The rest of the world shows situ or no economic growth this year, but China's economy is still expanding. Um, the total exports and imports with China represented 6.9 of Canada's global merchandise trade so far this year. That is almost a full percentage point higher than the average um, in the previous three years, and it's also the highest record. Hong Kong has always been the business bridge between the mainland of China and the Western world, including Canada. The city has uh, the, world's uh, the world's unique bilingual uh, common law system. Our regulatory regime is internationally respected, and we have a very um, deep uh, talent pool, very um, friendly business environment, such as a low and simple tax system. Capital formation is always a magnet for business and investors. In fact, Hong Kong's institutional strengths and fundamentals are also recognized widely on the global stage. Just recently in September, the October-based uh, Freezer Institute once again ranked Hong Kong as the top as the freest economy in the world. In 2019, a year that Hong Kong underwent some political challenges, the city still led the world in funds raised through IPOs. 
that is already the seventh time in the past uh, 11 years. Um, there is no doubt that Hong Kong will still be in the running because after all, Hong Kong has become a much sought after place for secondary listings of Chinese companies. As a Canadian company or professional, you can always access to your like-minded friends and supporters in Hong Kong. There are about 200 Canadian companies in Hong Kong. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong is the largest Canadian business organization outside of Canada. And the Chamber is one of the best partners of Hong Kong CBA. The Canadian community is also among the largest foreign communities in Hong Kong. Before your journey, you can also obtain the greatest support from the Hong Kong CBA, the Hong Kong TDC, and my office, the Hong Kong ETO here in Canada. Hong Kong continues to be the city never stops in the new normal. Thanks to the advancement of technology, people and people connection are still able to continue to a very large extent like today. This year, business executives and professionals can attend the Hong Kong Forum without the hassle of traveling, but you can sit in front of your screen at home or office comfortably to learn the latest insights and information on doing business in Hong Kong and in the mainland of China. You can also network with like-minded executives from all parts of the world. I understand that over 100 of Canadian attendees have already signed up for this virtual event. So the wonderful panel today has first-hand experience in the forum. I'm sure that you will enjoy the sharing and insights very much. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Emily, for uh, the update. I absolutely enjoyed this particularly uh, special one about uh, the get-togethers in uh, for Halloween in Lam Kwai Fong. I know that I think we all miss uh, that area very much um, and that we look forward to be able to get together again, obviously, while staying safe and wearing masks. Um, now let's dive right into our panel discussion. We have an incredible roster here with us today, including uh, Mr. Arthur Chan, who is our HKCBA chair. Um, we are an, also on his day job, an audit partner at Ernst & Young. Um, we also have here with us today, Ms. Alexandria Sham. She is the honorary treasurer of the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide. Full-time job is insurance advisor at RBC Insurance. We also have with us here Ms. Amy Willis, HKCBA Ottawa Section President, and uh, whose full-time job is a Director in Investments and Consulting at Pinnacle Global. Uh, Mr. Zohair Hassan Bahai, Executive Director of HKCBA Toronto GTA Section, and also the Executive Director of Can Education Consortium. Last but definitely not least, Mr. Andrew Yui, Director in Canada for the HKTDC Toronto office. I do want to mention that our panelists here today are actual leaders of HKCBA and also fellow members of HKCBA's various chapters with various experience benefiting from HKCBA platform and services ranging from two to three decades. Today's discussions are at the, uh, our goal is to really tap into their insights and to get their personal experience on how HKCBA has grown and how they've benefited from being an HKCBA member throughout these decades. Uh, so let's dive right in. I will start by asking um, our chair, uh, Mr. Arthur Chan, um, what is the original objectives of HKCBA when it was first started in uh, 1984? And how have we evolved uh, from these objectives until now, and especially adapting to the new normal? For the introduction, uh, Cindy, um, yeah, doing the math, HKCBA was established over 35 years ago. And it's uh, one of the largest bilateral trade associations in Canada. It has approximately 1,300 members in eight active sections uh, in major cities, starting from the West Coast in Vancouver, there's Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and Halifax, as well as representatives uh, that are based in Hong Kong, which together forms uh, strong dynamic connections. Um, to over 35 countries and regions around the world through the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide. Now, HKCBA is established to encourage two-way trade between Canada and Hong Kong and through Hong Kong to the rest of China and Asia as a gateway. 
It also provides a forum for discussion of trade issues involving Hong Kong and Canada and promotes policies by both governments that will lead to expanded trade and closer ties between the two countries. In, um, it's, um, it's really a, a Canada, Hong Kong, Asia connection in, in summary for all its members. And it really provides a lot of opportunities for the latest uh, intelligence sharing, networking, and helping members to go to the markets. It does this by hosting various conferences, such as the national conference that we have each year, as well as the Hong Kong Forum in Hong Kong, sponsoring meetings and professional presentations on topics of interest related to business, uh, leading trade de delegations, and also by organizing cultural exchanges um, now, during this pandemic, obviously, we have had to resort to uh, doing webinars, uh, but we hope that in the new normal, uh, in the near future, hopefully, uh, we can go back to some of these um, events in person. Now, expanding a little bit on the networking front, um, a section member is not just a member of a city-based member. Like, if I'm a Toronto member, it doesn't mean that I only deal with the Toronto folks. Uh, there is also the national network across Canada, from Vancouver to the Atlantic, and it doesn't just stop within the Canadian borders because it's an international web network, which Alex Sham will later uh, help us to expand on and give us more details. Um, in terms of going to the market in a strategic way, um, Andrew Yu from HKTC will provide more details on this front later on. And last but not least, uh, we have fun, lots of fun. The HKCBA family and members and their associates and clients also benefit from the social business HKCBA functions, in particular during the Chinese New Year events. All in all, um, I would say that HKCBA is established for members and will continue to evolve to provide platforms and services to members in a relevant way. Back to you, Cindy. Thanks. Uh, wow, Arthur. Thank you for uh, the information. Um, as uh, you mentioned, HKCBA is truly a national and international organization. And uh, I think you mentioned it briefly before, um, you know, even pre-COVID, our uh, local membership allows us to, uh, you know, have networks across Canada and internationally. But now with the uh, you know, if we're looking at it a bit more positively, uh, you know, I'm speaking to you from Montreal. I know you're in Toronto, Alberta, Ottawa. You know, we're really uh, across uh, across the nation from board to board. And I think it provides us, you know, in this pandemic, an opportunity to connect more frequently, which is really, really terrific. And, you know, you talked about the fun, uh, definitely, but I think it's also an HKCBA family. Um, so maybe just to get a, another perspective um, uh, from Zohair and Amy, uh, would you like to share some of your insights and experiences? Uh, you know, you both have profound experiences with HKCBA. Um, maybe to talk a little bit about how uh, you've been uh, using and able to benefit from HKCBA's platform to your, your business. Um. If I may, uh, uh, Amy, uh, you can uh, certainly add on to, I, I, I want to talk about a little bit of this general perspective of the, the sections, I, I think. It would be uh, interesting for our, uh, our viewers, our attendees. Um, the, uh, uh, Cindy, you mentioned local. Uh, the sections are local. Uh, we are the grassroots part of the association. Uh, we work with local uh, small and me medium-sized businesses uh, to expand into Hong Kong, China, and Asia, of course. <clears throat> uh, we reflect uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sections reflect the local business sectors uh, that are uh, in their uh, area. So for example, Toronto, from, which, uh, from where I'm, uh, I'm based, uh, we, have the, we have a very strong sector in, in banks, insurance, uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, and so on. Um, the other part is networking. Uh, we network locally, uh, but we use it, which is very, very important, but we also use it as a stepping stone uh, to the national and the international levels. Uh, networking is what we specialize in, so we are very uh, uh, proud of that. And uh, lastly, I uh, uh, want to mention how um, we promote Hong Kong uh, all the time at, the, at our local events. Uh, and the Toronto, I can, I'm sorry, I can only speak on Toronto's behalf. Uh, we have the Chinese New Year, we have golf, uh, we have the lunch and learn programs. And all of these programs initiate conversation uh, to, all, to new uh, prospective members on 
expanding into or trading with, uh, with Hong Kong uh, and beyond. Um, yeah, maybe uh, uh, Amy could uh, add something uh, to that as well. Uh, thank you, Zuhar. Um, yes, so um, we're based in Ottawa, so our, uh, we're a little bit different besides the business side. I want to add that is the connection that we have with the government. Uh, so we have uh, um, established a great connection with you know, EDC, BDC, as well as the um, Global Affairs Canada and, uh, and as well as its trade, uh, trade commissioner services. So you're benefiting uh, as a member, you're also benefiting being part of that uh, network with the government as well. And uh, some of them are actually our members as well. So that, uh, 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 of course, beside all the other business community connections as well. And um, for me personally, um, regarding you know my company uh, Pinnacle, I think it's a running about uh, broaden that network and uh, gain the insight about business opportunities as well as market insight. So um, uh, just recently, we're able to help a startup uh, in Canada here to connect a, a BC firm in Hong Kong. Uh, the reason being is that uh, the startup is already backed uh, by a BC firm in Canada, but they are looking for a co investor. Um, that uh, with a fo uh, the in uh, looking for a core investor with the focus with Asia, and uh, because of the the startup has their strong uh, market focus in Asia. So using Hong Kong, my knowledge and connection there, I was able to connect a BC farm um, in Hong Kong, and uh, apparently the, the this BC farm is uh, on the very top ranking BC farm uh, in Asia. And the, our Hong Kong government is willing to match uh, donor for donor for the investment that they make. So this is extremely attractive to um, the startup company that I'm helping with. And because it, um, it's kind of guaranteed and then mitigated risk. So that's just one example of how Hong Kong um, help um, Canadian business that are looking for to expand in Asia. So that's on the funding side of things in terms of um, Opportunities. I have also leveraged Hong Kong's strategic uh, location uh, to use Hong Kong as a testing ground for launching Canadian wine uh, into Asia and China. So we were able to um, find a temperature control storage in Hong Kong with a very reasonable uh, rate and uh, leveraging the local knowledge of doing business in China. And uh, we were able to find an agent for commodity inspection, label translation, as well as a financial in-country distributor in Asia. So, um, so there's a whole bunch of other examples I can provide, but I just, uh, we really benefit also the connection with the Canadian consulate. In fact, uh, we were able to win two um, medals um, uh, and a one uh, white wine uh, is in the best in show at the Cathay uh, Pacific International Wine and Spirit Competition for Canadian Reasoning, which been, was quite uh, in the high demand in the key uh, wine masters in Hong Kong and featured in, at a number of uh, Canadian consulate events. So uh, in the future, if uh, anyone's interested, uh, please reach out to me. I have a lot of examples. I've uh, also helped uh, pretty active in the creative industry in terms of film and fashion. And um, I'll go back to Cindy and uh, in the interest of time, um, I'll get back to you and then we can talk about the Hong Kong coordinator. Wow, Amy and uh, Zohair, Amy, your uh, examples are so concrete and, you know, what we like to call in HACBA uh, these success stories of connecting uh, Canada and Hong Kong businesses, which is, you know, really at the core of our, our mission and objectives. Um, Andrew, do you have any uh, additional comments that you wanted to add in terms of uh, you know, using the HKCBA platform as adding value to businesses? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, I would like to share my experience of, uh, of uh, benefiting from the HACBA platform as an HACBA member. Now, one of my office's major mandates is to encourage and assist Canadian companies to diversify their business to Asia through Hong Kong. Uh, this means that I, uh, I and my, my team members 
have to keep reaching out to Canadian companies. But the challenge is that I have only one, we have only one office here in Canada, based in Toronto, and a total of 16 members. Canada is such a huge country. So no matter how hardworking we are, how efficient we are, there's a limit on our reaching out to Canadian companies. That, uh, the answer, the solution, comes from the HACB network power. Because HACB has sections uh, across the country from Vancouver to Atlantic Canada. So uh, I and my team members are leveraging the HACB networking power. Whenever we travel to other cities, uh, we uh, take advantage of the HACB local network platform. For example, we participate in their uh, seminars, receptions, luncheons, uh, and gathering. In addition, uh, HACB sessions across the country, uh, once they know what we are doing, how we can help HACB members and prospective members, they also refer contacts to us. So this is a win-win situation. Uh, and um, uh, so I, I, I believe that my uh, experience is not unique because we have a lot of uh, Canadian SMEs, members and prospective members of HACBA. Uh, the important thing is for them to realize that they are not just a member of a city-based association. They're actually a member of an, a national association from coast to coast. And uh, once the COVID, restriction on travel is lifted. I highly recommend them to, uh, whenever they go to the other cities for uh, fun or for business uh, uh, expansion, take advantage of HACB local platform. Uh, you will never regret it. At, uh, but for the, uh, for the current time, uh, look at how HACBA's online platform can help you to continue with your networking. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Andrew. It's really true. I have to say from personal experience, every time I travel for work across Canada, I do feel that the uh, local reaching out to the HKCBA local, when I'm always very lucky to attend an event and, uh, you know, you just build your network that way. And now, you know, beyond the network and uh, business contacts and acquaintances, it's truly friendships across the nation, which is really terrific. And Andrew, once again, thank you and your team always. Uh, I know from personal experience as well that you know, whenever I have uh, certain clients of mine or uh, contacts of mine who have questions, you and your team are always so supportive and sharing, uh, you know, really precious insights and, and examples for them and guiding them to their business, not only in Hong Kong, but in Asia as well. Um, so uh, let's continue the uh, panel discussion. Uh, we haven't heard from Alex uh, yet, so maybe we could uh, get some uh, information and insights about how, you know, we talked a lot about the uh, national, I mentioned a little bit the international, uh, but definitely uh, if you could expand a bit more this international network that we have thanks to the Federation, uh, that'd be really fantastic. Great, thank you, Cindy. And uh, thanks so much for having me on this call. As part of the uh, Federation, the Hong Kong Canada Business Association is just one of the members that's available uh, as part of the Federation worldwide. And uh, we've definitely talked a, a bit about the national um, and the national connections in HKCBA. But I just want to broaden everybody's horizon as well and just share with you the power of the Federation and the advantages of networking within the Federation itself. So on our, on our screen here, you'll be able to see that we actually have um, uh, memberships across the world internationally. So we actually have 46 associations in 35 countries. And all in tow, we have over 13,000 members worldwide. So while we are so, uh, have a, of course, our key focus is to do business into uh, China, uh, Hong Kong, China, Southeast Asia, and, and going to do business that way. Keep in mind too, amongst all the um, business opportunities, networking opportunities that you can have even within your regions, uh, just the Americas, within Europe, 
and within Asia as well and Australasia. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity. And I really, uh, I'm so proud when I see this map and, uh, and I see more and more associations that we have, uh, that we keep adding. This year we've added two more on. And it really shows that we really are part of, by being part of HKCBA, you really are part of one of the world's largest uh, trade organizations that exist. So, of course, our flagship event, uh, and unfortunately we're going to miss being able to go to Hong Kong this year, is going to be our 21st Hong Kong Forum. Uh, with the travel restrictions that are in place right now, and of course, keeping in mind safety for everybody is an utmost uh, a priority. Um, we are going to our very first uh, online concept for Hong Kong Forum. Now, this is being done broadcast uh, in Hong Kong time. However, on our slide here, I have converted this into local time, Pacific Standard Time. So our East Coast uh, friends, it, it's a little bit late for you still, but perhaps our West Coast friends, uh, up to midnight, maybe you're used to having uh, calls with Hong Kong uh, live anyways, um, to midnight, uh, these are the times. However, we are doing local replays. So the local time Pacific will be on the first day of the session, which is our opening session. We will have our speakers talking about Catalyst for Change and really navigating the post-COVID landscape. During that uh, session, we have some keynote speakers from, um, from uh, Kerry Logistics, Ping An, very large players. But on day two of the forum, um, during 4 o'clock to 5 p.m. Pacific time, we will have the library one, plus also the next session was turning crisis into opportunities, the emergence of new technologies and solutions. And in that section, we actually have some uh, young entrepreneurs, some startup entrepreneurs as well. And they range everywhere from online education, uh, creating apps, health and science, um, technology and robotics. And then, of course, we'll finish with our Young Executive Program. The Young Executive Program is primarily for uh, young entrepreneurs. However, uh, when I've, I, I'm certainly not a young entrepreneur <laughs> anymore. <laughs> when I went to my first Hong Kong forum uh, in 2003, I, I would say I was a young entrepreneur. Um, but having gone to uh, 17 Hong Kong forums now, uh, it's, I'm always so impressed with our young entrepreneurs, the ideas they have, the energy and the networking and the opportunities they are really taking advantage of and they are really seizing the advantages and the benefits of associations like the Hong Kong Business Association and the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations worldwide. So I just want to share with that with you for a little bit. And uh, one of the key things that I miss about going to Hong Kong during the forum, of course, uh, we miss uh, uh, all the shopping and all the dining. So to keep me in mind, I am drinking from my favorite cup that I bought from the Hong Kong Design Gallery. So I can always plan for next year to go to Hong Kong Forum Live. Thanks very much, Cindy. I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Alex. That's uh, really terrific. And, you know, uh, you were mentioning the signature event, including the, uh, the uh, Young Executives Program, and it is really, truly astonishing to see every, you know, I, I, I participate uh, every year when I go and, you know, true innovators who are around the table. Um, and, you know, I, I absolutely love my experiences to the Hong Kong Forum, but maybe we could hear a little bit from uh, Amy and Zahir once again about their experiences and attending uh, the signature event and uh, you know how what they uh, felt in terms of their experience. Amy, go ahead. You have to unmute. To get used to this, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, everyone. So yeah, well, thank you, um, uh, Alex. That was, uh, and uh, uh, well, um, um, nicely captured uh, about your experience. Uh, indeed, I just want to add on my experience with um, the Hong Kong Forum is tremendously uh, enjoyable, I think. And um, you really, I really highlighted the, the, the big network that you need to tap into and um, that it's a connecting like-minded people 
and from over 30 some countries. And, um, but the, the important things you get out of it is that you also actually get connected with people that uh, Hong Kong Canadian entrepreneurs, Canadian business um, located in Hong Kong at the Trans-Pacific Entrepreneur Conference. And uh, they, they share their tips and the success stories, how they're doing business. It was in the region, Hong Kong, and um, you know, within the Greater Bay Area as well in China. So, and that's something you may not get in Canada. So, I think that's um, that's something extremely valuable. Of course, um, you get uh, you know uh, stay out on top of the latest innovation. So, in 2018, for instance, was the big focus on uh, AI and big data, and last year was with uh, smart city and green. Um, Green living and 5G. So, and uh, you can see some of the entrepreneurs and so successful doing that. Just so um, you know, the momentum feel like the startup community is just uh, uh, so lively <laughs> there. Of course, you get the latest update of the two uh, nerd uh, engine driving uh, Hong Kong's economy, um, the Greater Bay Area, as well as Belt Road Initiative. Uh, I was very fortunate um, to have had the opportunity to travel on the Hong Kong Do How My Cow Bridge in 2018 when it first opened. It took just a half hour to uh, to do high. It's, it's an extremely um, um, important you know bridge, but it's just uh, such a fast. Uh, uh, it's the connectivity you you can now connect with it, the the midnight cities within just under an hour and with that bridge it's just a half hour so i think um another very very important thing about the hong kong forum is also about sheer best practices so um ottawa where our chapter uh, again very fortunate we have uh won seven uh, award and uh, five uh, at the Hong Kong Forum. And so I got uh, the opportunity, the honor to share the best practices. So you just feel like you are running uh, in this big community that people trying to help each other to succeed. So that's something I think uh, it's, it's very valuable as well. Of course, I want to echo what uh, uh, Alex mentioned about, uh, or so Cindy mentioned about the young, uh, uh, executive program, and I also attended, even though I'm not going to review showing my <laughs> showing my age, but I attended there as well, luckily. And um, yeah, so I think the program is well done. Um, you know, not just focusing the success stories with the, but really, really try to bridge the young generation into the the Fun Hong Kong Forum because don't forget uh, our future is still our. You know the young people is our future. So we, by 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 bridging bridging that having that uh, young uh, executive program is quite uh, quite uh, interesting. And uh, I, I agree the energy, the innovative ideas, um, they're just so smart. And uh, I, I get motivated <laughs> for sure uh, by every time I attend that event. Um, of course, lastly, I, I don't I know uh, this year is canceled, so we could not go to Hong Kong. But the highlight of it, another one is the side trip to China. So where you can get to connect people better, to know them better, because you spend a few more days together and from people from all over the world and uh, traveling with you. And you get a chance to meet local um, officials, where which is if you have done business in China directly, you would know how difficult it is actually to schedule a meeting with local officials. So, um, so all of that is all part of this, this, this network. You bring this, um, you know, you gain this benefit by connecting locally and where you get chance to see and travel to multiple cities within a few days, which is amazing. Very efficient of using your time. So I highly suggest, um, um, encourage everyone if you really want to explore the opportunity doing business with Asia, um, join the Hong Kong Forum, and uh, you you will not regret. It's an amazing experience. So, uh, so hard. Maybe you can add on <laughs> how you benefited from the Hong Kong Forum. Certainly, uh, and and thank you for that because uh, all of that when you were listing out all the uh, the, the different uh, features of the forum, it makes me miss uh, the forum even more. Uh, knowing that I will we will not be able to attend, we will not be able to go to Hong Kong uh, uh, this this year. Uh, but certainly, uh, as uh, Andrew mentioned, uh, we are really planning for twenty. 
2021. Um, I, I think uh, wh what you said is very, very important, uh, uh, Amy, uh, and that is uh, um, that, that uh, when you look at the, uh, the whole picture uh, and you combine all those features together, it is so unique. It is so, un uh, there's no other, uh, I, I don't think any other comparable organization or even a comparable form forum that will allow Canadian businesses to benefit in such a massive way. Uh, and it's also efficient. In just a few days, you can meet Canadian businesses in Hong Kong. You can meet uh, uh, world leaders uh, that are focusing around Hong Kong uh, uh, in one or two days. And then afterwards, actually go and visit uh, uh, China and some of the leaders there and some of the leading companies uh, when you visit the factories and, and so on. Um, what I would like to share with you particularly is uh, how I uh, and my business uh, benefited from uh, our trip, my trip to, uh, to the forum. Uh, I'm in international education. Uh, so one of the things that I do and I prepare all the time uh, is to, uh, with my business card and the brochure and, and so on, flyers and the like, um, to meet the top executives from the, um, uh, the 40 plus uh, uh, associations related to a, a Hong Kong business. Um, and they are all members of the uh, federation. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I let them know uh, when I talk to them, uh, you know, introduce, get the business cards going, get the niceties going. And then after that, I let them know what my business uh, is, is all about. And I ask them a simple question. Um, do you have any members that are in education, international ed education period? Or if they know personally any uh, uh, organization, um, uh, any schools uh, in their country that, that you can connect me with? And um, so that really was uh, uh, for me quite uh, quite successful. Those simple questions uh, started uh, uh, clicking, um, and uh, it it really made a difference. And and uh, I have got several agreements with uh, to bring students now uh, from those countries uh, into Canada. So it has resulted positively, mainly because uh, I was there. I was able to meet uh, the right people. And I, I think that's important that when you go, when I go there, I don't have to go and worry, do I, is this person for real? Do I have to, uh, uh, do, I, do I know anything about him? Do I need, want to share so much information? <clears throat> I feel confident when I'm getting referrals from the members uh, of, of similar organizations. Uh, and they are usually of a very high caliber uh, and uh, in, in their respective uh, organizations. So that confidence level is very, very important. You're meeting eyeball to eyeball, and it makes a, a, a significant uh, a difference. Uh, when they introduce someone, I know it's serious. Uh, as much as uh, when we introduce anyone to, uh, uh, to uh, other organizations, we are serious. Um, so we, this is part of the, uh, the ambiance that you, <coughs> that, you, uh, that you get when you do attend. Uh, and the success is, of course, entirely up to you. You have to put the time in and the effort in uh, and, and plan and plan and plan uh, to make it into a, a success. So, um, I mean, for all, all, for all entrepreneurs, I think that's the way it is. So uh, I just wanted to share that uh, to, uh, to those who are uh, watching, saying that uh, Forum is going to make a significant difference when you have made that 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 uh, decided to come to Hong Kong, come to Asia, and uh, or China. Cindy, uh, can I uh, add uh, a supplementary uh, view on this? Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, when when you are a HACB member, you're not just a city-based member you're actually a member of the national association. And with the federation set up the, uh, with uh, uh, 46 Hong Kong associations around the world, you are actually a member of an international network. Uh, in addition to going to the Hong Kong forum every year, members may also like to take advantage of this because I believe that uh, our members travel uh, to different parts of the world all the time. So next time when you, uh, you know, COVID-19 will not be here forever, when uh, international travel resumes, uh, next time when you plan a trip to, for example, New York, LA, uh, Melbourne, uh, 
in the, uh, Jakarta, anywhere else, anywhere in the world. Look at what uh, Hong Kong associations are uh, set up are there. Find out what kind of networking events they are organizing while you are there. Join the event. Uh, use it as a, a, a quick networking platform. Uh, you will never regret it. Uh, that's my suggestion. And also uh, for the upcoming Hong Kong Forum, uh, uh, in addition to going online to the Hong Kong Forum, uh, on December the, the 3rd, I believe, Thursday, uh, there will also be what we call America's Regional Caucus uh, Zoom meeting, Zoom uh, webinar type, that uh, the leaders of the uh, Hong Kong of HACPA and their counterparts from the US as well as uh, uh, from Latin America will gather together to share uh, experience, share uh, 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 insights. So please watch out for that and we will be making an announcement on that. Thank you, Cindy. Of course, thank you, Andrew and uh, Amy and Zahira for sharing your experiences. You know, it is always so fantastic. And uh, Zahira, I agree with you. Hearing all of the advantages is making uh, me miss uh, this uh, wonderful trip that I have earmarked every year so much. Um, and uh, Andrew, thank you for your additional remarks. I'd like to also uh, ask you, Andrew, uh, how HKCBA members can benefit from the windows of opportunity that the Hong Kong family in Canada co-organizes. Okay, thanks, Cynthia. Uh, now, when a HKCB member or prospective member is planning to diversify their business to Asia, there are three basic components that they have to include in their business plan. They are first, uh, obtaining relevant market intelligence. Secondly, finding uh, relevant business partners and the third, go to the market in a strategic way. The annual team HACB delegation to the Hong Kong Forum is one of the windows of opportunity that members and prospective members can leverage. But in fact, throughout the year, uh, in the normal situation when international travel uh, is allowed, HKCB is actually involved in co-organizing 40, more than 40 sector specific Canadian trade missions to the Hong Kong platform. Uh, and these are the windows of opportunity that HACB members and prospective members can leverage to diversify their business to Asia, to Hong Kong. For example, um, upcoming, uh, even under the COVID 19 restrictions of travel. HKCB is co-organizing with the Canadian Consulate General of Hong Kong in Hong Kong, uh, HKETO and HKTTC, a virtual Canadian pavilion at the upcoming Echo Expo Asia in Hong Kong. Uh, and this uh, Canadian pavilion is, to, is for Canadian companies specialized in green building and clean technology to showcase what they have to offer to buyers and partners in Asia and from around the world. This is one of the many sectors that HKCB is involved in uh, promoting Canadian companies to Asia. Uh, the, uh, throughout the whole year, uh, of the 40 plus Canadian trade missions, uh, they cover many, many sectors, uh, including uh, uh, investment and financial sector, ICT, film and television, medical devices, food and wine, and uh, mega uh, topic like the Belt and Road, uh, the uh, e-tailing. Uh, so in other words, HKCPA is not just a networking association. It's not just an association organizing webinars, uh, luncheon, Chinese New Year Ball. It is also an association uh, offering windows of opportunity for members and prospective members to do very down to earth business uh, uh, with Asia. Through the cooperation with the Hong Kong family, HKETO, HKTDC, Invest Hong Kong, and of course the Canadian Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, 
the Canadian consulate in Hong Kong, and many like-minded multipliers partners in Canada. And the, the common goal is to help Canadian companies to diversify their business to Asia through the feasible platform in Asia, that is Hong Kong. So take advantage of this HACB members. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Andrew, for your uh, sharing these uh, windows of opportunity for our members and also prospective members. It is truly uh, interesting. Uh, I am going to now pass on to the Q&A period. Uh, like I mentioned earlier today, if uh, there is any questions from our participants, please feel free to uh, ask any questions you may have at the Q&A uh, box or button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, some of you may be on your cell phone, it might be on top, so you might just wanna verify that. Um, I know that some people may be shy, so I will maybe start asking uh, a first question uh, as to uh, what, are there any particular uh, areas or industries that are, uh, you know, particularly relevant for Canadian businesses to do uh, business in Hong Kong and Asia? Cindy, your question is for everybody, right? Of course, of course. Okay. Let's go ahead. <laughs> I will, I will um, uh, do the first answer. Um, I think that uh, uh, Canada and, and Asia are very complementary uh, business partners because what Canada has to offer uh, is uh, 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 what uh, Asia wants and what Asia has to offer is also suitable for the Canadian market. Now, we look at it this way. Canada is not good at producing consumer products, but Asia is. So uh, um, Canada can make use of the Hong Kong platform to source to merchandise, to do merchandising, uh, import consumer products into Canada. But at the same time, Canada is also very good at uh, services sector, uh, high-tech sector, natural resources. And that is what Asia is looking for. Uh, so um, uh, through Hong Kong, Canadian companies can export their services, technologies, and uh, the various natural resources related products, including food and uh, wine, uh, to Asia through the Hong Kong platform. Uh, might I add also that uh, the wine we grow great wine and the Chinese people in Hong Kong love wine as well. So we yeah. see, I see it's uh, complementary in many, many different uh, ways. Uh, one of the, I'm a, an advocate for um, uh, creating an agreement uh, like we have with Australia and Southeast Asia and, uh, and other countries uh, to have uh, an agreement, trade agreement with, uh, between Hong Kong and, and Canada. I think it's so complementary uh, to each country. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my take. <laughs> I fully agree with you. So hey, uh, we look at Australia. Australia and Hong Kong has a, a free trade agreement mm -hmm. and it has helped uh, the two economies to uh, do more businesses, both trade and investment. Yes, um, so we have a question coming in uh, from one of our uh, participants and uh, she is asking for Canadian businesses interested in expanding to Hong Kong and in China, uh, do they still first have to become a member of HKCBA in order to access the resources available through HKCBA? Arthur, so, would you like to answer that? <laughs> to be a member of the HKCBA for sure, but uh, I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary. Like we're here to help. And I think once you uh, get in touch with us and uh, we kind of connect you, you'll find that uh, it makes sense to, uh, to join us as, uh, as members going forward. So um, look forward to uh, connecting with you. Yeah, Arthur, I could add to that and saying that um, I think 
you know, obviously we're a uh, we're a uh, not for profit organization, and you know we are here to help and reach our objectives. Um, however, and, and you know we have especially now with webinars, both uh, you know paying and non paying members only and non members uh, uh, events. Uh, but I think that you know to really benefit to the maximum from uh, the resources that the HKCB can have, I think obviously becoming a member of uh, your local chapter is really really beneficial. As I mentioned before or beyond the resources and network, it's really uh, a, a family that is there to support and, 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 and uh, you know, assist you in your expansion uh, into Hong Kong and into Asia altogether. Um, so I strongly encourage you to reach out to your local section. Uh, Amy and Zahir, do you have any, anything else to add? Uh, I can, uh, actually Jessica is a, a um a new director on our board and she um, has been with us um, as a, a um, their company uh, is a member of our chapter but I know that Jessica joined our board because they she has a mandate to expand the business to Asia so she's very engaged ask good questions so certainly um, um, I think she is trying to help her clients as well to expand which is you know mutual benefit for HK, HKCP as well as uh, her client so uh, being a member, you definitely gain uh, additional uh, benefits, um, like being a part of this big network, as Cindy mentioned. And uh, so, yeah. Um, and also, like you do when you you do get the latest uh, update um, from like government you, new initiatives and and so on, and being more close to. Um, like the, let's say our um, government in Hong Kong, the Council General's office, we know that our Council General is very supportive of the Canadian uh, businesses as well as Canadians obviously in Hong Kong. And um, we, um, when you go to the Hong Kong forum, you get the latest update on the, uh, the latest government initiative. Like for instance, uh, 2019, uh, the new initiative was to award a Canadian startup as a part of the Hong Kong Forum with one million Hong Kong dollars and uh, with necessary all necessary support uh, that providing you with two years of free rent in Hong Kong. So that's something, it's incredible, amazing incentives that you cannot find anywhere else in the world, not definitely not in, in, not in Canada. So. Just want to add, uh, thank you very much, uh, Amy. I think you're absolutely right. But on, on the, on the, when you hit the ground, so to speak, there's one, uh, some benefits that we can uh, uh, take advantage of uh, as a member. Um, and, uh, and many of, uh, uh, of our members do take advantage of it. I even got a call this morning uh, regarding it. It's our Cafe Pacific partner. Uh, we have a, a wonderful discount uh, from Cafe Pacific. Uh, flying from Toronto and Vancouver uh, to Hong Kong, um, and uh, as a member, only as a member, uh, that you can uh, can join us. Um, and then the other uh, aspect is about the forum, uh, is that only as a member that you can attend, uh, not in this virtual one, uh, but the, the physical one. Um, you have to be a, a member to to participate in this. Now, we don't try to make it exclusive, sort of like, you know, we are better than you type of thing. That's not the whole purpose of it. It's a question of a commitment. Uh, we want to sh see your commitment. And uh, it's not a large amount of money when you look at it, you know, when other uh, uh, organizations uh, charge tens of thousands of dollars for membership, uh, we are in the hundreds of dollars. Uh, I mean, I speak for my own association. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's really a, a very, very small price to play, pay for the incredible amount of resources that we can uh, can uh, uh, can provide to you, for example, uh, Amy was talking about the Canadian uh, Canadian uh, Trade Commission at the consulate that we know well. C getting in touch with them is easy, but getting the right person is a different story. And we can help them get the right person because we do already have the connections there, and then we can go straight to the. Um, uh, uh, great to the, straight to the person who's in charge and, and can help you with specifically with your sector and, uh, and, and, and so that you can go in and, and expand and, and move on. Those are the, some of the benefits that you can uh, get as a member, uh, as opposed to just participating uh, at our events uh, and the like. Thank you. And Cindy, 
Cindy, may I just add the additional benefit, and I want to thank Zohair for mentioning that yes to, in the uh, regular pre-COVID times, to attend the Hong Kong Forum, you do need to be a member of the HKCBA. But that membership not only includes your membership into HKCBA, but as I alluded to earlier, the actual federation. It includes your membership into the federation and having access to over 13,000 members uh, worldwide. Uh, and as well, when you are a federation member, there are federation member benefits as well. So uh, when Andrew mentioned, if you're traveling, um, if you're, for example, some of the members in Malaysia, they're in the abalone business. As a federation member, you get discounts. Uh, if you're purchasing uh, events, visiting some of their members, the Cathay Pacific discount open to members only. Um, in Europe, there are also some of our members, some of our Canadian members members as well. They have offered uh, exclusive uh, membership uh, membership pricing or membership discounts, if you will, for uh, their services that they are providing, but only to members of HKCBA and the Federation. So all in all, when you add all these multiplier effects, uh, it definitely makes sense and it more than pays for itself. Uh, one business deal is all you really need or one opportunity, one network or COI you've met, and it's well worth it. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks, Alex. And uh, I know that I want to respect our one o'clock uh, engagement. So uh, for more details on all of the benefits, I invite all of our participants to visit our website. I actually just shared it with a at eight o'clock this morning perspective and now a now true registered member now, uh, hkcba.com slash pages slash membership for all the details on the benefits. And now I'd like to invite Arthur to give a brief concluding remarks. Thanks, Cindy and uh, everyone else. Um, I think uh, you'll learn a lot from this session as to what HKCB has to offer. So I really encourage you to uh, Check us out if you haven't already, and then uh, sign up for the uh, Team HKCBA virtual delegation to the Hong Kong Forum, and uh, continue to join the HKCBA and momentum and the new normal now, and also beyond the pandemic. Um, just to let you know, as of today, we have uh, over 100, actually at 110 Canadian delegates that have signed up uh, for the virtual delegation to Hong Kong in uh, the beginning of December. So uh, hopefully we can build upon that number, and uh, if there are interested parties, please get in touch with Andrew, you or myself, so that uh, we can give you more details. Thank you, Arthur. Once again, I want to thank uh, Emily, our dear panelists, our participants uh, for joining us today. HKCBA will continue to host various events uh, online during this COVID period. I invite you all to follow our LinkedIn and Twitter pages to stay tuned for upcoming webinars and events. Uh, as uh, Arthur and uh, our whole panelists have mentioned before, one of our signature benefits that the Federation provides uh, HKCBA members is the, uh, the annual Hong Kong Forum. And uh, as we've mentioned uh, many times today, although this year will be virtual, uh, we'll return into physical format in 2021. And uh, to get a sneak peek of uh, the team HKCBA delegation to Hong Kong, we would like you to uh, show you a short video from the 2019 Forum in Hong Kong. Over the years, HKTDC and the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations worldwide shared the same vision of establishing a global network of Friends of Hong Kong. The Federation's member associations have always been strong supporters of Hong Kong. They are active around the world, organizing over 450 events and outreach every year to foster closer relationships. They also support HKTDC's international trade shows and conferences in Hong Kong and worldwide. The highlighted event of the Federation is the annual Hong Kong Forum, which provides participants with the latest development and business opportunities Hong Kong is offering and as an excellent platform to network with like-minded business executives. We shared aspirations following the economic growth of Hong Kong over the last two decades. We understood each other better. 
Together, we brought over 800 participants to over 20 mainland cities and gained first-hand insights. We met partners and friends, and we shared joy and laughter. Coming to its 20th edition, we are here to discuss the future opportunities of Hong Kong gathering over 20 speakers to share their first-hand insights and experience. Moving forward, we need your support to join hands with us in exploring opportunities in the Belt and Road and Greater Bay Area. Regardless of ups and downs in the past two decades, we have overcome all the challenges and become stronger with your unfailing support. Built on the foundation of trust and passion for Hong Kong, the Federation looks forward to many more years of friendship and success. Thank you for uh, looking at the video. I hope that many of you will join us at the Hong Kong Forum virtually this year and in person next year. If there are any other questions that you may have or require any assistance both in Hong Kong or Asia, please feel free to reach out to HKCDA. Uh, we are here to assist you the best that we can in your business endeavors in Asia. And uh, like I mentioned before, if you have any, uh, if you're interested in our future events, please follow us on LinkedIn and in Twitter. And on this, thank you all for your participation. Take care, be safe, and have a wonderful day.